Oppression makes a wise man mad. Your fathers were wise men, and if they did not go mad, they became restive under this treatment. With brave men, there's always a remedy for oppression. They Those were the words of and Frederick today, Douglass from his famous July 5th speech success. spoken by his Freedom descendants. Is. But it's another anniversary being celebrated on this day 175 years ago when Douglass arrived in Ireland. Just seven years after his escape from slavery, he wrote his memoir and hoped to connect to a nation who supported his cause. That legacy is something his family still celebrates. When I opened it for the first time and looked down, those eyes twinkled at me. It was like, you finally found me. I've been waiting for you. Nettie Douglas was introduced to her great-great-grandfather through this drawing. Ireland made uh, such an impact on, on Frederick Douglass. She's reminiscing a lot these days as she reflects on the journey that changed everything. And sometimes it's hard for me to say this. So sometimes I tear up. It was the first time in his life that he was not looked at because of his color. He was treated as a human being, where he said people actually looked me in the eye, addressed me as Mr. He was urged to leave the United States fearing recapture following the publication of his memoir, The Narrative of the Life of Frederick Douglass, an American Slave. It's Frederick Douglass, age 27, which is the age he was in Ireland. Irish historian and Quinnipiac University professor Christine Keneally has been researching Douglass for a decade. He believed that his four months in Ireland changed him from being just an abolitionist into somebody who respected the rights and fought for change for the oppressed people everywhere. So he himself saw his time in Ireland as transformative. Why was he so taken with the people? You know, Irish people are very famous for their welcome, but what also, I think, happened to Frederick was he was so surprised by the poverty of the Irish people and by the sense that Irish people had been colonized for 600 years. And he said, you're not slaves, but you are oppressed and you are impoverished and you are marginalized. Catholics in Ireland were persecuted under British colonial rule. They were prohibited from buying land or voting. That ended with Catholic emancipation in 1829, an accomplishment largely due to the efforts of political leader Daniel O'Connell. Daniel O'Connell saw him as an equal, invited him to come and speak alongside him. The fact that when he was in Ireland, they reproduced his narrative for him, it sold out, they reproduced it again. Frederick is now taking ownership of his life story. Frederick is gaining agency about how he wants things to be done. Daniel Moho, Ireland's ambassador to the United States, first heard of Douglas through his relationship with the father of Irish independence. Douglas had and had been very impressed by O'Connell's political uh, philosophy, which was nonviolent agitation to achieve political reform. How do Irish people today see him? Well, I think it, it kind of runs through the um, civil rights movement in the United States in the 1960s. What do you want? Freedom! Which influenced the civil rights movement in Northern Ireland. But I think the connection today also is the fact that because of the Black Lives Matter um, movement here in the United States, people in Ireland have started to think about um, the changes that have occurred in Irish society. We now have a multiracial, multicultural society. That's why I think the Frederick Douglass story resonates strongly with Ireland today. President Barack Obama's visit in 2011 put an exclamation point on that philosophy when he traced his ancestral roots to County Offaly. Now I knew that I had some routes across the Atlantic. But until recently, I could not unequivocally claim that I was one of those Irish Americans. But now, there's no one more Irish than me. By some estimates, there are 38% of African Americans who have some Irish ancestries. Cleveland native Dennis Brownlee is one of them. He founded the African American Irish Diaspora Network to further explore Afro-Irish American history. I uh, found that a lot of this shared ancestry came uh, not just from uh, the oppression of slavery, but also through the shared communities that existed and consensual relationships. What future do you see coming out of this? 
Well, I think in the times that we're in, it's important for all of us to look at all ways that we are more alike than we are different. A discovery Douglas made himself through a journey some say returned him home, a more enlightened soul. And that was the great thing about Frederick. He didn't just fight to end slavery. He fought to end social injustice. You know, he believed in the dignity of labor. He believed in women's suffrage. So he truly was international and universal in his message. Whose teachings still ring true today. You know, one of my favorite expressions, Frederick Douglass is agitate, agitate, agitate. agitate. Those three words were arguably Douglas's most famous, and Nettie told me that he actually got the first agitate from Daniel O'Connell. So oh. really an amazing connection there. And the fighting spirit must run in the blood of the Douglas family because Nettie is taking it a step further, fighting for uh, human, fighting against human trafficking, I should say, through the Frederick Douglas family initiative. So she and her siblings and her cousins are continuing the fight in his name. Human rights. Amazing story, Michelle. Just Thank amazing. You.